people are interested, we'd love to have a section where we kind of do an open Q&A where uh, people can give some of their own comments and uh, questions and stuff. Tonight, we're just testing this out. So it's mainly kind of starting off with a conversation between me and uh, Reb Levy. Uh, oh, I guess we should start with introductions. My name is Yisrael Goldstein. I live in Crown Heights, and I've been running this little thing called the Let's Talk Mashiach podcast, uh, which traditionally has this uh, fake background, the uh, black and blue checkers behind me. So I'm glad I got that set up for tonight's uh, discussion. And uh, hopefully if it works out and it comes out nicely and teichendik and constructive, I'd love to be able to share this with everyone on the on the actual channel. So if everything works out, I hope that that works with everyone joining on the meeting tonight. And um, yeah, so me and uh, uh, who, our guest speaker tonight, our uh, host actually, is Rebe Levi Polichenko. Is that uh, how I pronounce it? And you're in... Uh, you said the West Coast. Where where are you located, more or less? Oh, I, I believe you're muted. Hang on, I have to make you. Is it possible to make both of us the? Oh, here we go. I can ask you to unmute. And yeah, here we go. Okay. So you are located in. I am located in Los Angeles, California. Oh, Los Angeles, California. Iraq, yeah, yeah. wonderful, excellent. Iraq, and so I'm not sure if you had a chance to see any of the, the previous clips in, uh, in this series, but I try to open up the conversation on the topics of, uh, particularly the topics that some of us Chabad Hasidim have some uh, sensitivities about, or a tough subject, tough questions, the elephants in the room, the things that get shoved under the rug. And um, uh, instead of uh, ending up in a situation where the years keep going on and uh the subject still remains kind of awkward it might be very constructive of as many of us as possible to kind of get together sit down talk it out and and figure it out so often enough we've had the uh the pattern happening in in past years where whenever we try to have such conversations Second, you start. I don't think we can hear you. Um, hey, sorry, testing, testing. Does anyone hear me? Yeah, good, good. Okay, good, excellent. Uh, if anyone doesn't hear me, please uh, use the raise your hand feature, which I believe users are able to do. And you should be able to kind of signal if something's wrong. Uh, I'm not sure if the chat is enabled. If anyone wants to test that, go ahead and test. If anyone wants to test the raise hand feature, hopefully that works as well. Um, oh, welcome, Reb Simcha. Welcome on board. Glad to have you here. And Looking forward to joining you in. But first, let's let's just quickly get into a little bit of the conversation we had earlier today, Reblevi, and then we'll take open it up to more Q and A and more thoughts. Um, Levi, should I catch things up, or do you want to kind of pick us up where we left off, or what? Do you, how do you want to get get back into where we were holding in the thread of discussion? Um, so, if I remember correctly, we were talking about Beit Namaskabo. Yeah, is that the yes. Yes, the very um, contentious okay. topic so, uh, of economic scabble. So, what are your thoughts about it, if any? Let's let's start with that. Okay, so um, I started off this uh, the un understanding of economic scabble as as yeah, who who is shaykh to is everybody shaykh to Mashiach, and and the Rebbe clearly wants us to right that it's 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 the foundation of it is essentially in Chayesar and Nimbez. Of where where the Rebbe brings Beit Hanamiskabel, and that's where most people um, get get this idea from. And the, the part is that the Rebbe wants us to the the new shlich is, is to 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 get everybody ready. Kabbalah uh, Mashiach and the Rebbe the Rebbe puts in, in as a as a sort of caveat that it has to be Beit Hanamiskabel. So yeah, so yeah, it. And so yeah, so that was that, that's an understanding that. Some some people are not going to be shaykh to, to, to Mashiach or something like that, and some it's going to be Merachim and whatever it is. That's what that was my initial understanding of it. 
Um, then I learned the actual, the whole sikha. And, uh, and learning the sikha, actually today, when we were t discussing it, I, I got a, a much better understanding of what the Rebbe was saying in the, in the sikha. If you, read, if you read the whole paragraph from the beginning to the end, the Rebbe is saying that, that the shluchim should get together and should make a chotas teves about how to prepare not only the shluchim themselves, but also um, the balabatim that the shluchim have in, in, in each one of their, in their um, makam shluchas. And, and the Rebbe says, how do you do that? To, to explain to them, to be masber, the inin of Mashiach and Tereshav Tzav, the way it's written in Tereshav Tzav and Tereshav Tzav, but if an amiskabel to every to every single person with his sikhoi and um I forgot the other word that the Rebbe uses. And the Rebbe finishes off that that uh, it should it, it should be it should be uh, in Yonago, le, le, teaching in Yonago Mashiach. And then the next paragraph the Rebbe says how every single yid uh, on Islam Klau is shaykh to this thing because they this is the generation this this the Aveda of this generation and therefore any year that is found in this generation is Shaykh to that Aveda. So my new understanding the the thing that I got um new which was made clear to me this time that I learned, that I was looking at the Sikha at that paragraph is that the Rebbe is talking about the the vat of the Ethan Miskabil is like Khanik Lanawa Pidarkai that you should teach a child according to his way. What does that mean? That means you should teach them terror, you should teach them mitzvahs. However, certain uh, children need to be taught in uh, a slower way, certain children can be taught in a faster way, in a more haskaladik way, some of them have to be more more chagas, all these all these different things. Obviously the Rebbe says about Chachma bin Adas, but the the term Ba'ifanamaskabel, my understanding, learning the Sikha today, is that you teach it to every single yid. Every, it's shaykh to every single yid and a hab. You teach it to every single yid. So you have to change it. Some yidin, you teach them in a, more, in a clear way that this is what says in Tereshav Iksav, this is what says in Tereshav Apel. You can learn it from the source. And some people, you have to, you have to embellish it. You have to do nice mashali, nice stories. You have to bring it in a much different, much simpler, so to speak, much simpler way. Okay, fair enough. Sounds good. And by the way, if anyone has that uh, image of the Sikha, I think I have it on WhatsApp. I'm just having a hard time dragging it here into uh, Zoom. But uh, we could probably share the screen with that and so that everyone can have a look at the, the snippet. It's very important to, to see the sources of what we're talking about as we're speaking about them. But okay, let's say, Naniach, fair enough. Um, uh, Rebbe, Rebbe Lazar, uh, let, me, let me allow you to uh, chime in over here. I see you wanted to say something. I'm allowing you to open your mic. Oh, you guys can hear me? Yes, we hear you. How are you guys doing? I just want to chime in that a lot of times we get sidetracked with these two words, Aithun HaMaskabal. I think we have to remember, Aithun HaMaskabal is about teaching in Yonagul Mashiach. And that has to be an Aithun HaMaskabal. And that, you know, that should be a discussion how to do that. But there's also an Indian, for example, the Rebbe says, Tarek Lefarsim, L'chol Anshayadar, to publicize to all the Anshayadar, that, that Hashem shows someone who's a Baal Bechira, who's without any comparison greater than all the other people, and he is a Navi Adair, and he's the one giving us directions, and he's giving us Nevoah, so the main Nevoah, he knows about. So there the director was to publicize. Ayyipan Amos Kabul is not said there. Now, obviously, when you publicize something, you want people to get the message. So, you know, talk to Mavinim in advertising, gets Madison Avenue, whatever it is. How do we, how do we get a message? How do we publicize it? And obviously, when you publicize it to a kindergarten class, it's not going to be the same like a Moshe was a and not going to be the same in New York or Los Angeles or Africa or Eretz Yisrael. There's different different types of persumim. I imagine these days things like to come out of Jam or JLI with some dramatic music and nice video, and maybe showing the Rebbe's various nevuos that propile happened. The Gashmias. There are ways to do this, but this whole Eifin Hamaskabel is talking about a certain sub, a certain Indian, which is when you teach a lot of things we have to do. There's presumim, there's whatever it is. Then there's uh, an extremely integral part is teaching about the Ula Mashiach. And that teaching, the Rebbe made a point of saying, 
I guess even more than you would understand on your own. Shadaska be by Sanam Skabul, Ukli Sikhloi Shalachabach, by from the Chachm being the Vedas. So I think we have to be careful just not to get sidetracked with this Ayyfan Hamaskabo, like Ki'ilu, again, it's talking, it's a little, I don't want to say narrow, but it's talking about a specific part of the general Mashiach campaign, and that is teaching on the goal of Mashiach. Then there is Prasumim, then there's uh, Indian of Stam of, uh, I don't know, Lati billboards would be a person or uh, PR, whatever you want to call it. You know, to, there I think that the general concept of life in Hamaskabel, like anything else we do. I mean, when you do mitzvah tank, should be life in Hamaskabel. You know, we can, people have conversations, talk, is life in Hamaskabel, have loud music and parades. We obviously feel, yeah, some could argue maybe people don't like it, they're blocking traffic and make the chrysler, we can have a conversation. But everything we do should be life in Hamaskabel. That bad, I think it's an additional thing, but that shouldn't sidetrack us from Tirsumim and other things we are. And I think the one that could, I think I made earlier today in the chat is it's, if we have a hayra to do something, chas v'shalom for a chaset to say, we can't do what the Rebbe said, the world is ready and that we should do because it's going to turn people off. I think the problem is on us to figure out how to do it in a way that won't turn people off. But the answer can't be, don't go there. Because if you're going to tell people, I'll take, I'll take something more benign, that the Rebbe is the Novi Adair, which that's black and white. No one could say the Rebbe didn't say that. The most you could say is he meant the free the Kareva. Fine. So publicize the free the Kareva Lamazagans. But clearly, to be Mafarsim, we have Aira, to be Mafarsim, to all the people that there's this person who's a Nasi Adair and then Navi Adair. So yeah, do that in Aif and Amaskabu. But, no, but, if, but if one has to show them for a Chasit to say, oh, that we can't do. Because if we do that, it's going to turn off my whole community. The Rebbe's telling us that is our job to do it. How to do it? That's a good question. Okay, we, let's talk which community you're in. We could figure out the demographics, how to do it. But, you know, like uh, Ronald Reagan had on his, who the Rebbe had a, had a, has a very, had a very B'chaviva score, B'shaitai, has on his, uh, I think on his desk, says, it can be done. Don't say it can't be done. It can be done. And if the Rebbe says that this is our job, it can be done. That's, uh, that's my point for now. Okay, fair enough. So... So is there a particular concern about that? I'll, I'll ask uh, also Rebbe Lazar, but also back to Rebbe Levi. So you brought up something very important from, from the Sicha, that we need to be mefars of the message, and it's important that it be niskabel. So is there a particular concern about that, about how that's happening, or how it's being done, or how it's not being done? And... Um, I guess I have one or two phrasings of how I would describe what the issue is. But Levi, let me pass the, the mic back to you. In your words, what have you found might, might have been an issue about this uh, in the past or currently that you feel is, is, is a problem about this in Lubavitch or whoever it might be? Um, my my uh, experience. Uh, so last year I was, uh, I was on Shlichus. And I had some some time to fight being with the fellow Shluchim. And I don't want to say any names, obviously. Yeah, probably but, better not to mention names. Probably. Yeah, but we're fabbing, we're fabbing about this Indian of our Mashiach and, and uh, not that it's not so much the, the urgency of 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 Bukha Mashiach, meaning Mashiach, that's obviously something that, that everybody has is is Shagbafiv Karl. Everybody has it's one of the Yudgum Lakrim. But but some but about this specifically about we're at a time where the aveda is kab, to be makabel pri mashiach tzitkenu that is the aveda. So I, I was having this discussion with with the shluchim, and this is before I I had such an understanding of of this of this Indian. And we're talking about the Eifin Amiskabel. We're talking about this this thing that the Rebbe is talking about that has to be Eifin Amiskabel. And if it so and so. If you understand the Eifin Amiskabel being that a person has to accept it, so yeah, we run a risk. What's the risk? The risk is if the person doesn't ex won't accept it, then that's a problem. So what are we going to do? We're just going to not talk about it. We're not going to go. We're not going to approach that risk because we want to be safe. We want to be right. Chabad Lubavitch is very into, obviously to a certain extent, is very into being loving and welcoming and inviting. Why? So that every single year we'll see how beautiful Yiddishkeit is, and what we we'll want to become will become a from Yid, right? That's 
that's the matter of most shulchan is a round of applause for the whole world that we push it to have right C teens is Kanina Hyatt over three thousand teens, right? Teenagers that you would think are the most um cult to, to religion and all these things. You have three thousand of them in seven seventy. It's yeah, a hundred percent. However, being that we're so we, we we like to be so safe and, and loving and warming and all these things, we don't we don't like to approach very um what's the word very it's sensitive yeah. yes very sensitive very very iffy topics like mashiach in the way of kabbalah because if we're saying we want mashiach now right mashiach is going to come all these things is very nice but once you get into now that Aveda is Kabbalah when the Mashiach is came, like like the Rebbe says, Mashiach is Shainda, and in Pashas and 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 Mashpat Minon Beis, the Rebbe is saying how the Mashiach is already we already see the effects that Mashiach is having. Mashiach is already doing things to affect the world. That already gets a little. That's already already um, stepping on eggshells, so to speak. Why? Because oh, Mashiach is not here. Where, where is Mashiach? I don't see Mashiach. There's still bad things happening. All these things that you can say, you can ask good questions, and we don't have the answers to that. So what's the safest thing to do is to stay away from it and explain the oath and Kabel that these people are not going to be Mikabel. I, you don't know why, because you've never, you've never tried it. You've never gone there. We're going to be safe. I hear yeah, I, I I can understand the sentiment. Um, so let's say if we are in such a conversation with Hosei uh, Dashliach, and and I guess the, the so you got the sense or you got the feeling that um, that they that it was conclusive that they were never going to go there or that there was nothing to talk about or that. It's the end of the conversation. They never did speak about it. They never will speak about it. Maybe they didn't feel comfortable it, about it up to some point, but then maybe at some point they could get more warmed up and open to it. Was there any... What, what was so bad, I guess, about the situation? Worst case, they didn't feel like it, or maybe, maybe, maybe they were going to talk about it. Maybe they're working on it. Maybe they're working on getting closer towards there. What was your impression about that? So my... <laughs> This is, this is a little uh, controversial, so to speak. I, that's that's why we're having my, this conversation. Yeah. yeah. From my experience, Shluchan don't like people coming to them and telling them that they're doing things wrong. And they don't like people telling them that you should be doing this instead of this. They don't like people telling them that, yeah, in Yenin, right? So, so my, so I tried, I tried, I tried pushing. I said, and all these things, all these things that were controversial back then. This is why, why that, then we did it and now we're not doing it. Lubavitch is, is never, is, was never supposed to be safe, right? We do things, we, we jump, right? Our whole um, way we approach the world is, is to go out and to change the world. What happened? That all of a sudden now we are just we just want to be safe. We just go back to to being to doing the safe thing, to doing the thing that we know is okay, we know is right. So my so okay so to 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 answer your question about my my conversation with the shluchim is that my understanding is they're not, they're never going to go there because then it means that they have to now face. And and this is what I think is is the root of a lot of people's of, of, of okay I don't want to I don't want to I diagnose a bunch of people but I think this is the root of problems that I see is that it's there is trauma right Nimbez sorry starting from Nun Nunalif Nimbez Nimgimel and Dalid precious years of the Rebbe pushing Mashiach and and make it very clear and then Nundalid happened. And you had and you had shluchim, you had people that you would think would are are there, but you know, 
They have questions themselves. Right? The Ba'if and the is in themselves. Right? The Rebbe, the Rebbe started in the beginning of the paragraph, before the Rebbe said about the Shluchim should prepare the Ba'alabat, and the Rebbe said the Shluchim should prepare themselves. Before you can, not before, but to get to your Balabatim, you have to be ready to jump. If you're not ready to jump, if you're scared, then you're not going to jump. So my, so the reason why I think these people, not these people, whatever, to generalize, but the reason why I think the people that, the Shluchim that I was having discussions with, are, I don't think are ever going to get there unless there is a mass, unless there's people behind them supporting them is because they're scared to jump. Fair enough. I could hear that. I can understand how that would happen. In fact, if I were in their shoes, it's highly likely I would be part of that problem. Um, who here is a shliach? Are you, Reblevi, where you are? Are you you're doing shlichus where you are? Or what, what's your, st- if I may ask uh, such a personal question? Yes, yes, I'm doing shlichus. Oh, I'm doing oh, the, okay. yeah. In the kitchen, I'm a so I'm curious how uh, how how much have you so far? I'm sure it's still in the works, and you're probably still going to work on it more. But how much have you so far achieved in 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 inspiring and awakening those that you have influence on? If you're a Muhammad, so your students, whoever it is, to be all active and like it's really happening. Mashiach is mamush ot ot, and it's here. How 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 is it going with your avodas Mashiach over there? Yes, good. Yes, good. Um, it's tough. It's definitely very tough, and it's a um, it's a it's a discussion more than than a, a thing that you can do, right? It's not. We can't make a program. Can't make a nice event and expect it to think it's it's a fabringen. It's a constant fabringen. And I do. I have. I have. Um, we had a fabringen. A few a few fabringens about this Indian, and we discussed it. We went through it. We learned, we, we, we talked, we had our, our uh, issues, we spoke about our issues, Baruch Hashem. But that's, I think that's my, that's my approach to this, trying to get other people to be excited about it, is, is going through, yeah, going through the issues that we all have. I had these issues myself, I mean, to, to a much lesser extent, but I had, there were issues that I understood. And we talked about it. And I'm still, I'm still, Baruch Hashem, with the help of my fellow, uh, fellow friends and, and, and fellow uh, family members, I'm still going, I'm still getting a better and bigger picture on this whole idea. Great, amazing, excellent. Uh, it's very inspiring to hear your story. I live here in Crown Heights, and you would think, you know, Chatzres Kachenu, the Shechuna Samelech, Kam Siv Hashem Sabrocha, you would think that mamush, uh, mamush, 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 but guess what? It is true also. I mean, it's like the story of the two Odessas. There is this Kron Heights and there is that Kron Heights. And depending on which one you tune into, you could go to this Odessa or the other Odessa. Uh, but I often find myself in one and I often find myself in the other. And guess what? It could be mamush very, very tough, even here in Kron Heights. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm walking in a Mashiachville and sometimes I feel like I'm walking down the street and like, wow, there are people out there in Yehupitzville and they're way more ahead of the game and ready for Moshiach than some of us Hevra, are here in America, in New York, in Crown Heights, Mamash around 770. We have way, way, ways to go. And yeah, I've also dealt with a lot of these, you know, Gimel Tamu's trauma and how do we deal with it and how do we work through all these issues. And I've tried to whatever extent I was able to open up the conversations and, and discuss it and talk about it with that I'm around, and that helps a lot. I, I was basically hoping and yearning to to make, make an environment where can we all support each other and be on the same page that, yeah, I'm behind you, you're behind me. Let's continue encouraging and spreading the message onwards. Um, okay, so here's, here's how I would phrase the issue in my own words. I'm not sure if it's the same issue. Maybe it's a completely separate issue, but what comes to my mind is like this. Um, I'm not sure what happened to me in my journey of waking up from Bakrhood and deciding I got to take a stance in this situation. What's the story with the whole Moshiach thing? I ended up uh, somewhere in Yehupitzville, not specifically in Mishachistville and not specifically in Antiville. I have my, my guns aimed to both directions. So I have Tainus here and I have Tainus there. 
if you if we may because we're bringing out the elephant in the rooms over here um i'm going to present one of my gripes i have with so-called the the enthusiastic side the yeah Moshiach is coming now 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 side so to speak side if we could use such words side i don't like these categories and labels the hulu but what I find is that um, maybe what helps a lot is to consider that chassid and that shliach as part of the audience rather as part of the staff. I, I don't mean to speak in demeaning ways, and this might be offensive to those, you know, to those chassidim or to those shluchim, but we got to say it for what it is. If we find a chassid or a shliach who is not yet part of the staff sort of thing, so, 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 to, so to speak, is not yet ready to be with it with us and be on it and be part of it. And it's mamash kfira, oy vei, Our own Rebbe is saying words in the sicha and you're saying, no, I can't deal with it. Ribbein nishalelem, varf maris fulabavich, uskolu kola am besregehem. What is this? Can this nish for leiden? Plus, he wears a hat and a beard and a kapata, and he dares to call himself a chassid, a lubavitch, a chassid of the Rebbe, and he's ignoring the Rebbe's words, and he's putting aside, and he can't deal with the Rebbe. Was is das, was is? Yeah, 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 we have that tendency. But we get a little, a little too sharp with that, I think. I think we get a little bit carried away. By now, it's already a habit. It's an ingrained, um, we're addicted to it almost. I've gone through this conditioning myself. I have hung around lubavitch, from bacherhood all the way up to adulthood, to, to, to younger manhood, etc. And I've heard and I've seen it all the time, and it conditioned me too. I also get triggered, and I also react in this way. If someone is wrong, then someone is wrong. If the Rebbe sagt, das ein sicher, the Rebbe sagt, das ein sicher. We get this gvura, we get this like uh, what we are often misspired, that Chabad Lubavitchers are so much better than the Polishers, uh, better than the Misnagdim. And, uh, why? Because they throw rocks. And they make Pashkevilim. And they say, Varf Maru is Shaigetz, uh, whatever. And they can't accept, uh, you know, and they can't deal with Mikurovim. And if someone is an Epicurus, then he's an Epicurus. And they... But we are so much better. Why? Because we are open and we accept and we deal and we do Mifzoim and we're Mikarev and you mean Mikareves to each and every Yid. Except maybe our own fellow chassidim. If it's a guy in Mitzayim, then we have to be nice and friendly and be mekarev to him. But if he's a guy that has a beard and a hat and he calls himself a shliach and he calls himself a lubavitcher, then we don't have to be so nice to him. Then we can take the hammer, we can make a kardum lachtechbo out of the Rebbe's words and we can bang them over the head with it. How dare you? How could you not? The Rebbe zokt azoyin azoyin, how could you not? But the Rebbe, the same Moshiach, Rebbe Melech Moshiach, that is, wants to take us out of Golus, he is telling us, go ahead and do it with, with Boifin Amiskabel. Now, in each situation, it depends with who you're talking about, you got to be Boifin Amiskabel. If you're able to go further ahead with the guy and speak about it with him all the way at level 214, then go for it. But if you see that the guy is not going to go there, and he's never going to go there, and he's impossible, and he's forget about it. Is this our sprach that we say, so it's a forget about it case, or it's never going to happen, or it can't work? Whatever happened to us being like, okay, you know what? The Rebbe is sending me a shlichus right here, right now. This shliach, this chassid, today is day one of who knows how many days that I have to, I have to work on him. We have to work on him. We have to come back, I bring with him again. And inspire him again. What is Taka the big deal about the Rebbe? What is Taka the big deal about Moshiach? If we don't have those stars in our eyes, if we ourselves are dealing with issues about that, but we expect, hey, hey, you must believe like I believe, hey, hey, you must feel like I feel, then who says he will? Maybe he won't feel that way. But we could work on it. We often have a knee jerk reaction that it's forget about it, and the anti is an anti, and it's impossible to work with them. And they're never going to get anywhere. So I have one, one random little thought about that. And then I want to take Rebbe Lozer's raised hand. And, if, and Levi, if you had something, some other thoughts about that. So I have this random weird theory. It's partly uh, Hergesh, partly Boich Svara. My theory is that we all have this uh, five-year-old myth of how Moshiach is supposed to come, which looks something like, 
suddenly the heavens open and suddenly we hear do, 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 and the shofar is blowing and the clouds are opening up and Moshiach comes down from the sky and pronounces Ani Melech HaMoshiach and instantly, right away, the whole entire Klal Yisrael sees that and they accept him as Melech HaMoshiach and whatever. So I call this the, the, the fantastical fantasy Moshiach. Uh, not to say any kfira, that any of these things are not going to happen. Talkab Shefer Godel is a real thing. And uh, Melech HaMoshiach announcing it to everyone, Higi Azmangul, is a real thing. And maybe even the phrase, Ani Melech HaMoshiach, is also a real thing. And all of these things are real. I'm not saying kfira, that they don't exist. But what I am saying is, um, I think that there is also a tzad, or a phase, or a, one of the tkufais of uh, Moshiach coming and being Nisgale, which is very much, like the Rambam says, it's very much very in the world, in the normal, natural way of things happening, as if it's another day at work. So, Sidim of Lubavitch have one day sat down to yet another Fabringen, yet another Sicha with the Rebbe, and the Rebbe started saying to them little hints and revelations that he might be or is or blatantly is Melech HaMashiach and we have to start revealing this and explaining this to the world you know this is not the usual thing that people are used to hearing wait a minute I thought there's a sky opening up and Melech HaMashiach coming down from the clouds uh, this one big Rebbe Tzadik Erbis in Brooklyn starts telling his chassidim that he is Moshiach that's not what we expected that's not uh, the usual the, the big the movie that we were expecting to see, Lahavdil. Um, so, in that fantasy Moshiach, what happens often, and I hear this a lot when I speak to Chesidim around, around the community, oh yeah, this anti, forget about it, he's never going to figure it out. Oh, that shliach, impossible. And those you didn't forget about, it. it's a stalemate, it's impossible to work with this. What we're basically saying is, let Moshiach come and save the situation. He will come down from the sky, with a snap of his finger, he will make a miracle happen, and mitamol, everyone will realize that Mishachistim were right, and Antis were wrong, and everyone will applaud, and they will all bow down and say, Va'anach we're, we're leaving it on the Eibishter, we're leaving it on the Rebbe to solve. But perhaps the Rebbe told us, Tut alts vas ihr kennt, you know, so far, Nachayor, 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 Nachayor went by, and Moshiach still hasn't revealed himself fully. Maybe we're waiting on the Abish there, and we're waiting on Moshiach. But what if they are also pointing the finger to us, and they're waiting on us? Maybe it's not that easy for them to bring Moshiach, because it's not that easy for us to bring Moshiach. And we're both waiting at each other like this. No, you do. No, you do. Uh, like the, the Gemara, that Shuvu uh, Elai, uh, Shuvu Aleichem, and Yachid Verabi, Malach HaKarabi, whatever. Point is, the Sikhs of the Rebbe have both of these concepts in it. On the one hand, the Rebbe says, as is built to move on Klaal, Klaal, Mashiach should have already come long ago. It's not, we already finished everything that we have to do. There isn't something else more that we have to do. It's all finished. It's all done. Uh, it's completely on the Abishter. We don't understand why he, it's, it's the Abishter's fault, basically. And then the Rebbe also says, Weiter in the Sikha, Muzain. Wait a minute, but Rebbe, I thought you just told us that there is nothing more to do and it's all done and it's finished. What are you telling us here? Maybe what the Rebbe is telling us that the Ebishter should bring Moshiach take me out right now, but also there is something more that we can do. Let's not leave the whole thing on the Rebbe and on the Ebishter to solve. Why is it so impossible for us to go over to this chassid, to that chassid, to this shliach, to that shliach, and help them along the journey? Yes, they're a so-called anti. Yes, they can't deal with it. Yes, it's hard on them. How many more years are we going to punch them in the face with that? It's almost like we're holding them back from making progress. If we we're the real antis, okay? <laughs> we're holding them back because we keep coming back to them, showing them the sikh of the Rebbe. But look, look, it says on the page over here, look, you have to, you must, how could you not? And we're, we're punching them in the face with that. How many years are we going to keep doing that? When can we get back to the table and say, okay, 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 we had fun with that. It was fun doing the debating game. 
that I could rhetorically win you game, v'chulu v'chulu. When can we talk it, get back to mekarev zayn? You mean mekarev? Sit down, fabreng. It's not a one-time deal that I'm right, you're wrong. It's a continuous deal of let's go on this journey and bring Moshiach. Add come my ramblings on this thought, but uh, let me open up Rebbe Lazar Frisch to uh, share your thoughts, please. And then we're going right back to Levi. <laughs> um, a couple of things, very simple. Number one, the fantasy Mashiach, I mean, the MBD Mashiach. This guy's opening up to everyone, freedom, and call it what it is. The MBD Mashiach, the Komaisi Mashiach, the Mashiach, uh, yeah, the Mashiach that, uh, yeah. The exactly. Pro, uh, the, the finally, the magic moment we've all been waiting for. This guy's opening up, but yeah. And indeed, that will happen. Also, what was the other thing I wanted to tell you? You said about that. And um, no, there was one other point you were making. You were you're giving a reference. About leaving Not... it up to, to the Rebbe to solve Lubavitch. No, 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 no. You said about... What's that, this is the, oh, snap it. You said with a snap of the finger, it's going to be a wave of the hand. Not a snap of the finger. Let's get our terms, let's get our terms straight. Okay, then again, your first point. Okay, so whatever. It's a close group here. That's so not... Okay, I'm going to say the more Gavuridika side of it. Just to explain the more Gavuridika side, the Chilik, you asked, why do we treat a Shliach or a fellow Chassid worse than a guy in the street? So there is the concept, not by everyone, but by some, again, taking the Gavuridika approach, that it's a day yes, Rabbi Nai, Umechav, and would have the end of it. So there is that concept that probably doesn't apply, but one could think is going in that Kav, again, taking the Gavuridika away, whereas the guy on the street is totally not Shayach, that, that concept. Because he does, he is no, he is no does, and and if you're dealing with someone who does know, someone who you know, who 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 you, who you know for a fact knows the see was vayda for breigid that has the seichas and knows the seichas, and unfin desvagin. Okay, so then there could be an asayin why at least why he's different than than the guy in the street, and bechal is different than the guy. I remember her from Arundel Vagan to Mespia, you know, Marstown. You know, people being Raya that the Rebbe, you know, when, when, a, when a girl came to the Rebbe with piercings and tattoos, and the Rebbe smiled at her and gave her another dollar and was made it. So the Rebbe's not talking to the Bishra girls girl should be that way. People will say, look, you told me how to dress, look how nice the Rebbe is. It depends which direction you're coming from. So, so that's the color, it's, it's, it's very different. Um, then there was also, there was some type, a part of the trauma after Gamal Tamas, was it looks like I'm, I don't know who he is, but it looks like I'm the Zakat Shabbat Chaburi here. I'm not sure um, how many were around. Was anyone around Gimel Thomas time? Uh, you, got, you were around? Yeah, how old? I was, you were uh, few, it was six, seven years old, whatever. Okay, but I'm saying, but not like 20, unless you opened the uh, stock, stock punch, you were, whatever. In any case, um, so eight, the, the, eight there was old. a lot of, eight years old. So there was a lot of, a lot of, what was I, sorry, was 19, 20? 1920, there was um, a lot of trauma, and, and, and rightfully so, rightfully so. We definitely, um, some sidetrack, definitely that was not part of the script, that was not an option, that was not shayach, that was, even the, even that it should look, even the way, according to any interpretation, that there should be la'enei baser, even according to the state of New York, that this is right, that was totally, it was, to say it caught us by, you know, beyond the shock, beyond, there's no, there's no word to describe it, a lot of trauma, and there was perhaps a sort of a movement to kind of get away from this, get away from this, what was the mainstream understanding. And you can see this now lately, someone's been putting out these videos of the Fabregans, some of it have been posted on the chat, of what we would call mainstream Mashpiyam, certainly I could tell you the mainstream Rabbonim of the large communities of Echnaz in Klachabad, the Handel of Montreal, of the Marlow in 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 Crown Heights, wherever in Rebello, Montreal, in Australia, any any and Israel, every community, uh, the uh, everywhere, uh, everywhere there was clearly the and it's important that everyone should know that Rabbi Mashiach and Rabbi Yael was obviously was was spearheading this. And it was all based on the Rebbe. You listen to the Fabrenga. Uh, it wasn't like this would be a nice thing to do because we love our Rebbe and we're proud of him and we want him to be Mashiach, which, by the way, wouldn't be a wrong Chesedish There would be, there would, could be, there would be merit in that. But that wasn't what it was. It was going on the Rebbe's Sichas and the Rebbe's answers and the Rebbe's Idud and, and everything going on. And then Gimel Thomas was a rough one, you know, especially for someone like. Uh, you know, there was what's the names here? One of the very, very big Maspiam who was making a very big point 
how Gimel Thomas cannot not happen, and if it happens, uh, and then when it happened, you know, Takarov and I wasn't in that position. I was 90 years old. I wasn't uh, 60 years old going around the whole world. So yeah, there was enough you know, to EC and this and kind of, you know, and uh, there was a confusion. There was a confusion. And there was a bit of a thing to maybe let's get away from anything that might be controversial and let's stick to what everyone is comfortable with. We spoke before, but I am a scabble, what everyone's comfortable with. Even though the Rebbe said it, let's do what everyone's comfortable with. So when people get upset, I think the earlier point, people get upset at certain laboratories, and dubas ladas, dubas, you know, um, it could be coming from that place that you know the sikhs, you knew it then, you were saying it then. And again, you know, the truth is, it could be a matanum in a shamai, a matanum from the Rebbe, why some of us have less of an Isayan. Some of us it's more clearer, and some of us it's not clearer and there's more just like having Mr. Phil and some there's some, you know, personally it's not always easy to go in the street in the supermarket. Are you Jewish? I'd much rather, you know, when, when my son of Simcha's there, I tell him to do it. You know, it's it's not so gishmak always. I'm also yeah, gishmak, I'm also this gishmak. Then there are some people, they push it out of gishmak. They love, they walk with the fill in. There's no push of the gas in so nothing they like more, better than the face of good state. They want it for the year on still. But it's it's unbelievable for them. Right, and, uh, but for me, it's a little bit harder. Some some people they can't even they can't. I do it for Paul, but some people don't do it at all. You know, my my head's Lee Ashley McEwen. He doesn't walk anywhere without filling. A, a guy wearing a yarmulke with a beard will ask him, and he has. And there are people who say, "No, I kind of forgot today." He puts. He'll ask anyone that you put on filling. Plus, you, he's walking into Hager. He's walking into wherever he's walking into a front place. He's walking around with filling in his hand. Did you put on filling? He has a good smack in this, or his this is so strong that. Whatever his own feelings don't uh, don't, don't take a place. This is, everyone has their own. Could be the also matonim in the Why you feel that way? But but that's perhaps why we look at other. Ah, then there's something else. Then there's the Indian. We are someone who has who's living with the sikhs and living with and including up to and including the gimel. The Rebbe's yidu davichi with the sikhs tefes. Rebbe moving his whole body and those of us who are here besas ma'isa. And are you guys who are and you are kids, but if and if you're old enough to remember, but those who were the bottom and we understood what it meant when the Rebbe's coming out and he's moving going like this and making with his left hand and and and, and, and Adi Mazer were kochizik like we as Baruch Hashem we're doing right now. Plus it's not like it's like something on the side burner, but like things like this, making a podcast, making a zoom, putting it on the front burner, spending our evening talking about this. So we'll buy a shul of a nash. A shul of a nash, and, and after the avening, saying Yechi, for example, which was the minig in 770, which was on the front of the Rebbe, and it was done continuously, was, was done in 770. And, it, and there's no rechuk, it's a minion of Lubavitch Chesidim. No, there's no, no one there is not a Lubavitch. And you say Yechi. In the shkun, and the people get upset at you. Like, you're the, you're the horrible person. How dare you? How dare you say Yechi? And they get horribly offended. So you're asking, why do we get upset at other chassidim? It's often the other way around. Like, what do you want from me? I'm doing what the Rebbe, like the onus is on you. Like, why aren't you responding? Why, why, at, at least say, you know what? So as a chassid, it's not like we made these words up out of nowhere. It's talking about, when I say the elephant in the room, like I heard from, I think I mentioned on the chat, uh, Rabbi Shmuelu said that all chassidim, we all believe the same thing. The chilek adam is Whether or not we say those particular eight words. Okay, some of us feel like myself that those eight words again. For those, if I was for over a year, I was standing in front of the Rebbe saying those eight words, watching the Rebbe using every the gashmius using every ounce because the Rebbe could have stood up and danced if he wanted to. But for Poil in that situation, the Rebbe using all of his uh, strength to be ma'ided it. So yeah, for me personally, those particular eight words are extremely important and hold extreme significance. But whatever it is, but the bottom line is okay. We just dealt in the room the eight words. If it is being said, I would think the least you could do is just be quiet and have some, and like many people do, and many people indeed take that road. Hey, you know what? You're saying this, <laughs> you know, LA is, LA Bechlal is a little bit like that, where no one really has, a, whatever, no one really has a very, very strong opinions. And besides for mom, it's a couple of people, and even they, uh, say, they're, they're, they're don't, don't, don't make me say it, but if you want to say it, say it. They're here. They know. They know there's something behind it. So I think that's number one. That there should be a not, not like we are. Not how we covered 
Yeah. Right, what you were saying before, taka should be avoided, or you're a dust, or you're a yens. But I could hear where it comes from when there's something that's so important that people say, you bakhlal, you, you're, you're being without, like, hello, could, could, could we at least, could we at least talk about the sikhs? I mean, I, I heard, I'm not going to say it here, even in the small group, but a um, very prominent, a very prominent rav, a very prominent chassid, a very prominent chassid, very, very prominent, um, was shown, was shown a certain sikha, and he said, oh, on the base, that's, that, that's the New Testament. I'm, I won't tell you who it is, but you'd be surprised if I told you who. So you all heard of him. You know, it's hard to take that. <laughs> you know, so so if the reaction of that person is in the business kachos, whatever Phil Shainas was saying before, perhaps there's a place to that when when someone is saying like that. Or I know, uh, I think what happened with Rav Simcha that he was uh, he was eating uh, he was eating ice cream or something, and the shliach told him, oh, the prominent shliach, a head shliach, told him, uh, no, did this, did this, I think it was a head shliach. One of the head shliach, are oh, you being without a barudim? Simcha said, no, we finished the this barudim. Is what are you talking about? So he tells him the Sikha that ever said, uh, that whatever we're doing right now is not avoid the Sabarudim. That's already done. We finished the last dinner. And now it's avoid the Miyached. That's whatever it is. So Ken is done. So he said, look what the Rebbe saying. The Rebbe wrote this. The Rebbe said this. The Rebbe was Magiyah. He printed it. Ken is done. Ken is done. Because in his mind, if we finish avoid the Sabarudim, we have the Gaula. I did have explained that indeed we should have the Gaula. And now we have an issue. Mashiach needs our help, etc. Okay? The, Certain people, just like you were saying, the five-year-old vision, the five, the MBD, what I'm calling the MBD vision of Mashiach, people have their vision of Mashiach. For example, someone who's, this was an older person, you know, the Beit Chassidus, about Avodah Sabarurim, and this whole, and I knew that. I'm younger, and I also knew that. You finish Avodah Sabarurim, it's over. And it's, sometimes it's very hard if you didn't pump Chachzuch in that particular Sikha, and fabring about it, even if you did learn the sikha, if you didn't fabring about it, you taka can't put that together. What do you mean we didn't finish? And that's why, perhaps one of the reasons why the Rebbe said Derech HaYeshara is to learn in Yon Egu Mashiach, because these things have to be learned. You have to learn, what is Avoy Yisabarurim? Vos meit nigmur Avoy Yisabarurim. Haka, if so, what are we doing here? And yeah, and the sikha explained this, and it has to be learned and, and fabringed about and spoken about in venues such as this. All right, Adka. So now. No, very well said, very well said. Good points. I have some replies to it, but I first want to hand the mic to Levi to share with us any of thoughts about, about any of the above. And then, uh, Simcha, if you're still there, I'd like to give you a, a minute also. Um, okay. Um, so I have, I have a few things to say. Um, number one, with regards to the whole... Uh, uh, response the way we treat other people yeah i think i think uh Rabbi Leza had a lot a lot of good things to say um and yeah yeah i just i, I want to add on that that the the reason why i i i know that i know i know this with me personally before before i before anybody really you know continued continued the, the the discussion with me and didn't just you know bow out and you know put their head down and keep walking but they had a discussion with me before that i used to be very you know uh, uh, whatever it is i used to you know, i was a bacher instead of bacher but that as a bacher that, that's your guy you're just going very hard and and the reason why i personally did that was because there's a sense of urgency right this is this is after Chav Ches Siva. Chav Ches Nisa. I've touched him then. Right? The Rebbe, the Rebbe said a sikha of Tatsu Serkent. I have already finished all of that. Now it's up to you. And what are we doing? We're still doing things before, from before, from before the Rebbe talked about how there's a new update on how we already finished all of that. And now we're doing something new of, of Kabbalah's Rebbe Mashiach Kenu. So if like this, if it's all up to us, if everything that if the only if everything that is left is for us to do something by ourselves, right, without them having to mission mission then then what are we doing? Let's do it. But as I said, there's a bunch of circles and, and, and it's very interesting because after that sikha, right, as I said, do everything that you can do and then and then what the chassidim do, they they have no idea what to do. They ask the Rebbe what to do. <laughs> And 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 Rabbi, well, the Rebbe, the Rebbe heard them. Rabbi's like, I hear you. You have no idea what to do. Fine. 
So he spent the next two years, Pashat, every single Shabbos, every single Sikha, Pashat, Mashiach, 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 talking about Mashiach and explaining, basically, all they know, most of the none of the Mashiach is for those two years, for those years after. And and when 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 you when you hear that when you hear the Rebbe says all oh, after the Rebbe is telling you to do all that you can, this is what you should do. This is what you should be doing. So, yeah, what are you what are you supposed to be doing? Obviously, you're supposed to be doing this. Yeah, but you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. There are certain people that that they they they're stuck. They're stuck in a mindset. Why are they stuck in a mindset? Again, like I said, because it's safe. Because this is a safe thing to do. This is what everybody. There's, there's probably the only people that are gonna that are gonna uh, be against me are Goyim, are the anti-Semites, are the white supremacists, are the black Hebrew Israelites, and those are the only people that are gonna be against me. And for those people, I can say Tishul Tachis. Why? Because they're Goyim, right? So I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna do the things that everybody agrees with me. And again, I think I think it comes down to that. You're scared to jump, but you don't. But the reason why I'm trying to push you is because that is what you need to do. You want Mashiach so badly, I want you to recognize that all you got to do, all you got to do, the only thing, one thing you got to do is just take that leap, just jump, just do it, just do it. And, and, and um, I, heard, I heard a nice talk from, from Rabbi Wolf, Shlita. Um, he, he gave, I forgot when it was, he was talking about Mismach Ga'ula um, Ga'ula, yeah? Sorry, um, go to the tefillah, right? Why we say, yeah, go to the tefillah. So he said that that when, I, th- I think it was Rabbi, Rabbi, one of the two said that when, when they did it, it was very shmack, right? They had such a beautiful day. Now, he, he, he explained it very nicely. He said, well, what was it, right? That every single, what, what, you, don't, you don't think that every single day they were, they were, they were saying, go to the tefillah? Of course they were. Of course they were. There's big tanaim, amraim, all these things, big rabbanim. Uh, then what was the whole right? The whole right was that they took that leap of faith that once, one time, or however, once or twice, they decided, I don't care what anybody else has to say, I'm going to do, I'm going to jump, I'm going to take that leap of faith. And and he said, they said, the I'm saying the same concept, but they, they did, they took the jump. This Magolo Lutvila, they pushed it, did, and they went, and they, they did the controversial thing. And they said, push it. The best. That was the best thing they've ever done. They didn't do it again because it's still hard every single time. It's hard every single time. It's a Veda. And and Rabbi Wolf says every single, he always has hardships with with this whole thing because it's pack. It's controversial. You are going against the majority. You're going against the establishment. You're going against what everybody else thinks in their mind. And when you do that, it's very scary. When you do that, it's very scary. So what he he pushes, he gets a lot of. The, the Rebbe, he, he, he has a lot of stories of, of, of Igris, of Oyel, of a lot of stories with the Rebbe, how the Rebbe's project showing him how he's doing the right thing constantly. Whenever he has fakers, the Rebbe is showing him that he's doing the right thing. Anyways, so one thing as to why, again, why I think it happens, obviously it, it's not the best thing to happen, but it happens because, yeah, like, like my Shavai said, I, I'm the bad guy for saying Yuhi, even though that is the Aveda. Why am I the bad guy? Right? And and and, and it's it's more reactionary than 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 this is right. It's more it's more about the it's more about we react to the way um to the way we live our lives essentially, right? We're living our lives with with, with this imminence and this constant need of this is what we gotta do. And your reaction, the way you react to that, the way you treat me is, I'm the one that has my head on, uh, 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 right? I'm the one that's crazy. No. And, that, and that's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I totally hear you on that. Uh, Reb Simcha, you there? Should I first uh, give some responding thoughts or let's hear you? You've been waiting very, very, very patiently all this time. Please go ahead. Um, anyways, um, how's everybody doing? Good, Baruch Hashem. So, uh, a lot of points, there's not tradition there said already, but um, one point that was on my mind, which Levi spoke about at the end, is people, um, while we like to think of ourselves as sophisticated thinking machines who uh, compute everything logically, 
and cannot be fooled by anything that is very sad, uh, very far off the mark. And as we've seen from the past few years in particular, but in general, through looking through history, people are going to believe whatever is mainstream, by and large. And it'll be near impossible to convince anyone of something that is not what most people believe already, what he's hearing from reputable sources. That's a fact. Um, you see through, throughout COVID, no matter how many times they lied and changed their mind every two seconds, if it was mainstream, people believed it. If it wasn't mainstream, people didn't believe it. You walk outside right now because it's mainstream to be confused about genders. Everyone's confused about what, what's a gender. No one has a clue. Why? Because that's the mainstream thing. Even though this is the most simple, obvious thing that anyone who's... This is the Rambam example about something that's a shua shav because it's so obvious. And yet there are so many people now in the street that don't have a clue. That's I don't think you could find a, bi a bigger example than, uh, than that. But bringing it back to our topic at hand, you can try and spend all day and night trying to convince individual people of, uh, of your points. And by and large, I found people don't have a very good answer. They'll just spit back some stupid things in your face uh, that don't really sufficiently address your concerns. But the, co the real concern is, if what you're saying is true, then my father is wrong, my mashpia is wrong, my Rosh Hashiva is wrong, all the shluchim are wrong, and you're the only guy who figured it out. That, that, that is, by and large, the, the problem. Uh, I'm not trying to fix it, but that's the problem. Uh, and if you want the masses, certainly talk to people, but if you want the masses to accept what you're saying, it needs to be from reputable sources, the mainstream uh, thing to do. That's, that, that's one point that I wanted to make. Um, Another point, and this uh, was also mentioned in a certain sense, that uh, the Rebbe told, gave over the job to us. We're, we're assuming the Rebbe is going to do it. Well, the truth of the matter is the Rebbe told us in very emphatic terms that he is not doing it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Rebbe said, I'm, I'm living in the Gula world. I'm ready for the Gula. That, that's not a problem. You're, you're not ready for the Gula. And while we may have hoped, or I think even the Rebbe may have hoped at some point, that the, the MBD and Avram Fried version of Mashiach will unfold. The Rebbe told us it's not going to happen that way. And in Chai Sada, the Rebbe said, we need to make it our personal responsibility, Lahavi Lumaisa Mashiach. That means it needs to be the personal responsibility of every individual person upon awakening that when you wake up today, I'm going to bring the Geula, Yemaisa Mashiach, says the Rebbe, not just Yemaisa Mashiach, Lashin Yachid, Lashin Abin, and not just the way Mashiach is Bechaskis Mashiach. But the way Mashiach is is is, is the Hanu, we till now had a perspective. We're following the Rebbe. We don't know the full plan. The Rebbe does. The Rebbe told us to, to, have a, to, to go on shlichas. We're going to go on shlichas. The Rebbe told us to put filling on Yidden. We're going to put filling on Yidden. The Rebbe told us to, to learn Kol Terakula and, and, and dance every day of Adar. Then we're going to do it. Why? We don't know what. We're, it's all pieces of a puzzle. And the Rebbe is the one who has who sees the whole picture. And he's feeding Einstein on him that we should lead to the Gula. The Rebbe told us, I'm checking out. I'm done. The pieces of the puzzle are complete. Now it's your job to actually go into the Gula. The Rebbe told us, I'm telling you, believe me, don't believe me. The fact is, the Gula is here, Bapashtas. The Gula is downloaded into the world. It's in a zip file. And it's your job to extract it. Ofa Finija Egan, start living Gula life. I can't do anything to help you. This, I can give you the tools, but you need to do this yourself. It needs to be the, we have to feel like it is our personal responsibility to bring the gula. Actually, the Rebbe's not doing it. So this, the shliach, who my father mentioned before, he couldn't comprehend that. He said, well, if we're done, if we're done the birurim, then, welcome Rabbi Wolfson. If we're done the birurim, then, then, then what do you mean? The Rebbe should be taking us out of Gaulus. So what, what are we doing? The Rebbe sent him there. He was doing the job that Rebbe sent to do, and now he, they can't be over where the Rebbe said was exactly the opposite. We were Messiah in the Shlichas. We talk did finish the Shlichas. It's a whole new stage now. It's a unique thing, and that's very scary, and that assumes a lot of responsibility, much more responsibility than I think any of us is really comfortable taking upon ourselves. Um, and yeah, whatever. That's another point I wanted to make. That, that's what the Rebbe really does demands from us to actually 
that's that's part of what it means to open your eyes to to start living gulag that is the mission to realize that the gula is in the world that was the point of mishpatim the devil says i'll prove to you the gula is in the world look at the un look what's going on in washington i'll prove to you right now the gula is down the world. you don't believe me you think we're still in gulas is that it's not true i mean technically we're in gulas but the whole reality of the gula is in the world and it's up to us it, it, whatever is going to come to pass in, in, the, in the mind, in, 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 whatever we want to, where is it? Give me a second. I'll find it. It's a quote on the passport. It's Kavaldik. While you're looking it up, let me just ask you real quick. Is it possible that this is also part of the trick? You maybe blame it on the Satan or the last try of Golos to trick us back into Golos. Is the trick is we think that the main action or the only action or the, the specific Things that the Rebbe says clearly in the Sikhs, those are the things that we need to live by and start living by Mashiach. But when it comes to a fellow Chassid who's still stuck in their own Golus, we get tricked by that. Like, no, that, that's not part of what we need to do. They need to be on board already. They need to already be with us. They need to already this understand already how we understand. Them. Again, that's true. This is already taught them how to do it. Right. But, uh, first, trying to understand. But if you look at the, here's a quote on the passport from uh, Rabbi Eisenhower. He says, what America hopes to bring to pass in the world must first come to pass in the heart of America. I think it's a very important point that the Rebbe was saying is central to Lahavdal, to bring in the Gula. The Gula is in the world, but if we want to make that happen, it needs to come to pass in our hearts. We have to have a Gula practice. If, if we want to have, the, why is it so important that we should open our eyes? We need to first open our eyes, and then the Gula, then the, the Rebbe will come and build the Bissim Mikdash and, and have Kibbutz Galit. There's no more steps that have to happen. No, there's nothing more on a checklist of things that need to occur before we'll be ready for the gula. We're ready right now. We're ready 30 years ago. We're waiting for us to go over the threshold. Now, this is not a very simple concept. This is not a very it's a concept that you have to think about. You have to really understand. And the only proper way for this to happen is everyone's fabriking about this. Everyone's talking about it. You're living in a reality where all of the people you know and respect, your mashpiyim, your, your shashivas, your father, your family, the structure of the school is all focused on making this a real thing happening. You're not some guy who's like arguing with his friends about whether or not it matters who Mashiach is. It's like, if this is where we're holding, we're, we're it, whatever. Anyways, Chaim. Yeah, if this is what we're holding, we have business to take care of, like serious business to, to get to. Yeah, yeah, valid point. So uh, just a, a, a quick thought before I want to pass the mic to the Pinchos uh, who joined us, for, for joining in real quick. But I just wanted to give some thoughts to, to Levi and also to some things that Rebbe Lazar told us and also some things that Simcha added. Um, first thing that comes to mind is 100%. It's definitely very hard, and I think it tricks us. It tricks our chassidish psyche in a very, very hard to resist kind of way. There's this kind of mental trick that happens to us and we're almost powerless to it. And each one of us, myself included, when it comes and hits us in a curveball kind of unexpected way, we trip and we fall into it all over again. What happens is that, but I know that Chosid, he was my brother. He was there by the Rebbe all those years. I can't, how could he possibly? Or a Chosid who outright says, right? Finish No, it's impossible. Or a chassidu said to isi, or a few of the other things that I'm not remembering offhand now that Rebbe Lazar mentioned, like things that make it really, 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 really hard. Like, oh, oh, how are you supposed to deal with that? How could you not go crazy? How could you not say for mamash? Or how could you feel it? Absolutely, it's very, 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 very hard. I think the closest comparison to that sort of thing is anyone, Baruch Hashem, I'm not familiar with this. I hope to never be familiar with this. But anyways, anyone who's familiar with the concept of having a household member, particularly a child, who decided to go on their own derech that is uh, so-called off the derech, and how difficult it is to not have the knee-jerk reactions to that, and instead to accept and to love and to invite them back and to keep open conversation with them. That is perhaps the closest example that I can find to this idea of, on the one hand, how could this possibly, Oisvor, how dare you renege everything that I educated you for and that I invested so much time and money and effort and sleepless nights on you, my son, my child, my daughter. How could you do this to us, blah, blah, blah. And on the other hand, you can't, you have to shut up. You have to suffer it. You have to shut your mouth. You have to put a smile on your face and be like, 
sure, my son, my daughter, I love you so much. You're welcome anytime. And you have to swallow if they're smoking. And you have to swallow if they're doing drugs. And you have to swallow if they shave their beard or if they're not wearing a shade. And you have to swallow and you have to swallow and you have to swallow. And yeah, you know, you maybe you go into a room and you go crazy. You scream, you bang the walls, but you come out and you deal with them and deal with them with a smile. So maybe in our Nidun Didan, it looks a little bit something like this. On one hand, we go to our therapist, our Siddish therapist, and we smack him in the face. I can't stand this. How could a chassid that I knew that all the years that the Rebbe says clearly in his words? Ha-? And then you turn to the other side and you deal with the shliach, you deal with the chassid. How are you doing today? What's going on with your Chabad house? Oh, you spoke to your community about Parshas Vo'era. And to yourself, you're thinking, and he didn't even mention Mashiach, the whole Nekudah. Ba- oh, very, very nice. Beautiful. It's so nice. Yes, you're doing great in your community. You're making progress. You're teaching them about Inyanim from the Rebbe. But it's Inyanim from the Lamids, from the Mems. It's not even... A- yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Your mamas, you're teaching them the Rebbe's teachings. You're showing them how to live life. Amazing. I'll talk to you again next week. Next week, Mashiach has to come now. Take off me out. What's going on over here? We can't deal with this. This is going to take forever. It's impossible to talk to these people. It's a- Next week. Hello. How is it going? I want to, you know, you want to follow up the conversation with them. You want to bring with them again. You want to slowly, slowly, but surely, little by little. Hey, can we sit down? Can we learn a sicha? Eh, whatever sicha you want. Which sicha do you want to learn? This one? Chelek Aleph. Chelek Aleph we did back in the Lamids and the Chafs. Oh, okay, fine. Chelek Aleph. We'll ignore. We'll ignoring the Nun Aleph, Nun Beis. Yeah, okay, fine. Chelek Aleph, Chelek Beis, Chelek Gimel, Chelek Dalid. And 15 years down the line, you finally get to Nun Aleph, Nun Beis. I'll bet you, if you do this kind of approach with them, with patience, with Avaz Yisrael, and with, uh, you know, the, they will eventually come to you and say, no, so why aren't you telling me already to take out a Nun Aleph, Nun Beis? I know that's what you're after. They'll tell you already. They'll bring you to the table. I have some personal stories of, of journeys like this that I've had the honor of going through that were impossible, that everyone in Lubavitch was claiming, ah, forget about it. The Mishachistim were saying, impossible. And the Amtais were like, forget about it. I went myself in person, and I tried, and I attempted, and I succeeded. So far, I haven't had that many of those stories. But any time that I said, I'm not going to listen to what everyone else is telling me. I'm going to go try it myself. I tried it myself, and it works. It takes time. It takes effort. It's frustrating, because I want them to already know what's true. But I tried it. Why? Uh, just a final thought. I was personally getting a little bit suicidal, so to speak. What do I mean by that? Not mamush, literally suicidal. But I looked at the situation with Mashiach, with Lubavitch, with this Machlekes, and I said, you know what? This, everyone is telling me this is a forget about it situation anyway. It's not going to happen anyway. It's, it's uh, whatever, this is Kfira Mamash, but I, we're talking the elephants on the table here now, okay? I'm going to grow old and I'm going to die and I'm going to be buried in the cemetery before any of this is going to move anywhere. Mishichistin are going to mishichist, antis are going to ant, and uh, th- this is how it's been for so many years, and this is how it's going to... So it's forget about it anyway, okay? So if it's forget about it anyway, and I'm not going to subscribe to these, to be specifically Dafka and anti, and I'm not going to subscribe to be specifically a mishichist, then why don't I, I... Now I'm free. I can do anything I want. Okay, well then I'm going to try something weird or different or new. I'm going to go face the situation and talk to the guy, even though you're not supposed to talk to the guy. I, but the, and the guy is talking kfira. And you know what? Someone mentioned, Yeah, it's very, very painful when we see a fellow chassid who's But still, I taino still. Here in Lubavitch, this is the way we do things. You mean mikarevas. You turn to one side, then you will scream at the wall, bang your head, turn to the other side and deal with it. Anyway, I'm rambling too much now. Reb Pinchas, are, oh, I already, I already rabbled uh, Reb Pinchas out of the out of the group already, rambling too much. Uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna open up all the mics at this point and uh, open it up to anyone who wants to uh, add some last thoughts. And uh, let's wrap this up for now. I think it's something we should do, uh, we should do generally. We should do like. Uh, once a week, once every two weeks. I think like someone mentioned, even the mere fact that we have to get into it and we have to bring about it and we have to talk about it and that gets us into actually Geula the type, then we, we should. We should talk and do this. Anyway, I think this is Pashat a, uh, 
It's like a beautiful thing. I think this is mamish what the Rebbe would want. Chassidim getting together when I when I when I was slow, when I was chassidim, discussing it, hashing it out in the in the oif and nago kavod zalaza. I would would be interesting to have a taka hit rapinches because he seems to be having an alternate point of view or a call upon him. He understands the alternate point of view, but uh, you know the Rebbe says the 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 machsava that even before you do it. The fact that we're just, Messiah, 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 we're talking about it, just a very, it's like the opposite, what the Rebbe says about, uh, about Eretz Yisrael, that, you know, the dear, it's the other way, that even just talking about Chafel Shalom, giving up Stachim is putting the Lujid it's exact, it's the exact opposite by Messiah, just talking about Messiah, just trying to figure it out, that already makes the Pu'ula, that could, and, and that could bring it. So I think this is Mamish, uh, this is Mamish giving the Rebbe Nachas, even if, even just this, Hour, what we're sitting here, giving an hour of our time, hashing it out, and I think yeah, I'm hoping Emir Tashem. I think I put a little clip. I think it would be very glad if we talk. Uh, maybe let, let's talk a talk. How we're talking about publicizing? Let's talk again. A good a call upon Masarim Yisrael, a Kama Masarim Yisrael to join from that chat. I think it would be very rich if we had. Not we're looking for opposing points of view, but good to hear. You know, it it, plus it makes. Uh, Make your point when you have to prove your point. It could be mechazek you. So I think it will be a glass. I think maybe we should make a goal, perhaps for next. Let's say whatever. Let's say next week. Let's say next week. Uh, let's say next week. Whatever next week. Um, if we could make a goal of having ten yidden, we never spoke about a sodomy Yisrael. So maybe we could um, either individually the people we know, or on the chat to make a. I don't know if you want to make a flyer or something, or a face us, or. Uh, I don't know if you want to make it somewhere in person, you don't want to make it into Zoom. Whatever it is, to get us started, I think that's an attainable goal. We have like five, six chavro. Let's get 10 chavro. And let's start with that. And then maybe it could become a, an Indian Gadet, even Badara Khateva. If we get 10 people, then 20, then 30. And, you know, if, and I think now, talking like the, the total campaign, people are storming, people are learning Contra Space Rabbeinu, which the young and there are pretty obvious. There's a, I could see a way for, for this to happen, for, for the Rebbe soldiers to get mobilized. And we should talk to do it. So I think this is a very great chazach. And Baruch Hashem, Zechino, Zechino, to be part of this uh, talk, we should realize how lucky we are that, you know, from all the people in the world, Bechal, it could have been Daimim, it could have been Semeyach, we were in Medabirim, we were in the Yidim, and and from the Chassidim, we're from Hebra, who hopefully will be everyone who are trying to, uh, you know, Zechino, Matayim, Chayim, Chayim, Chayim. I don't know if anybody called it, but it's a hakel. I put the sticker on there. All right. Okay, okay, all right. I guess that's in the category of it, it goes without saying. When you think together, yeah, but it's uh, now we said it. The holidays went without saying till now. It's a hakel, a hakel, like a ball thing. Very nice. I'm, 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 I'm proud to be among this brotherhood. Makes me very proud. Okay, but let's talk and get, let's get a son of Israel. I'll call upon him. I'll call upon him. It's going to you know, it should be that. That'll be a glad chazach. All right, good. 100 percent right. yeah every everyone uh, uh, feel free to bring in at least one more guy you know there's five of us here one more guy. every one of us bring one more guy for next time we'll do it maybe mamash in one week so maybe oh it's, i guess it's already pouring okay i guess we'll be in touch on the chat when when we'll who's, exactly who's, 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 who's the fifth guy who's e by the way who's who's e whoever it is the uh, to be in the <laughs> i think it, I, I i think it's also a glass Kazakh. people are sometimes you know a little bit uh, literally camera shy but i think it's a very glad Kazakh that people we should encourage people put your video on i think that the more people, they see us being like you know and talking on camera the more yeah. it'll encourage our and others Listen. It's good also. People always say this isn't the time and a place. We are making a time and a place. <laughs> the fate is to discuss yeah. all of those things now. Yet is the tight. Now we're talking about whatever. We're talking about this now. You know, yeah. whatever, whatever it is. So let's uh yeah, we're gonna so, we'll, let, let's get up and we'll be good. Yes. Yeah. And, and and as I of course love having the final word, but I will stay tuned if anyone else has another final <laughs> final word. Uh yeah, my, my final Idealistic thought is, at some point, it's always true that ot, ot, right now, Mashiach is coming any second right now. That's always been true, and that always continues to be true. There is also, apparently, in the Rebbe Sichus mention of, so how come it didn't come yet? Like a cheshvan and to look back and see. No chatog, no chatog, no chavoch, no chavoch, no chayor, no chayor. 
And now we're saying 30 years as if it's, oh yeah, it's 30 years. It's, 30, it's like a Shreya Gewalt. And so I permit myself at this point, you know, maybe by 10 years, we shouldn't speak this way. Maybe by 20 years, I don't even think that's true. Even one year, even one day, we should have already. But, but for some reason, I now feel that we reached this milestone that we're already starting saying with 30 years, I feel open to say, if we want to continue being right, here's what happens. Here's where we are today. If we want to talk and bring Mashiach, and we're, we know that it might be very hard for another chassid who we consider an anti, it might be very hard for him to take upon and accept and live by these inyamis. Look, look how hard it is for us to him, to get around how right we are and to get over that and to get past that and to be Kaisheya our own uh, merits and our own uh, conviction to be able to uh, tell another chassid in a friendly way and in a mechanistic way to help them get into go- look how hard it is for us so it's not just on them it's easy to see the negative on someone else but it's hard to see on ourselves what we need to do to make it happen so I strongly encourage Whoever wants to continue the same old pattern we've been doing for the past 30 years, good luck. Let's see where we go with that. But whoever wants to try to get some better results, let's maybe try to shift around how we usually operate. But go ahead. Anyone else who wants to say anything, please go ahead. In, in your path of being nice to everyone and making friends, how does that lead to... How do I get from there to everyone doing the... How does that get everyone on board? What... I, What's the process? It does work. It does work one by one. Uh, the Rebbe only, the Ebishter, the Rebbe only expects from you to do what you can do. And from there, if it takes even just one year that sincerely fully does everything he can, even one year is enough for the Ebishter to say, that's it, I'm bringing Moshiach now. So there's both. There's a balance of, on the one hand, we Listen, need we to could, have... We could all hope that will happen. It just doesn't appear from the Rebbe seekers that that's what he was asking to happen. He wanted you the don't... whole army of Shluchim to transform through whole mo. That's what he asked to happen. And then also the Rebbe says that almost as if it's mashma that the Rebbe knows that not everyone is going to be a Mishichi. Oh, it's almost that as if the in, Rebbe predicted that. Was in, that. That, was, that was earlier. That was, that was a half a year before, before the Rebbe changed the name of the game and said that now Mashiach did come and now we have an entirely new, uh, new job. You could okay. say in a certain sense, and I think this is hopeful, that when the Rebbe says it's all the have of the He doesn't know what to do, and he's giving it over to us. Um, the Rebbe's problem there, if you look in the Sikha, was that Mashiach didn't come yet. And then the Rebbe comes to us in Parashat Vayera Chayisara and tells us that we were all okay successful, and Mashiach did come. So I think we we fixed that that problem the Rebbe had then. We fixed it. <laughs> uh, I hear uh, I hear that I hear that. Arguably, I could say, hey, in some conversations, we are referring to Chav Nissen like it is useful and convenient. In other conversations, we say, oh, no, we could dismiss Chav Nissen because we already passed the that. The concept is certainly still applicable that we have to do all we can, but and we've moved and maybe- fur- further along. We've made progress since then. The Rebbe's indiv- unique problem there was that the Mashiach didn't yet come, um, and that particular hurdle we have in a very big way overcome now we have another problem to deal with that Mashiach didn't take us out of goals but that's the next step and certainly the same logic applies that we must do all we can that's without a so, doubt so if the Rebbe says in the Sikha that all Shluchim should such and such and such um, does that immediately make that every Shliach already did such and such and such or it, the Rebbe gave the directive the instruction now it's up to those Shluchim to do it and it could be a possibility, maybe, that Einet Zvei Dray did it, maybe even Sen did it, and maybe even more did it, but not necessarily all of them. And There's, sure, it's a Gishriya yeah. Gewalt, it it's, shouldn't be that way, the Rebbe says what to do, they should do it. There is a little bit of the factor here of us pointing at someone else, though. It's like we're finding a, 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 a disadvantage, or something wrong by someone else. The Baal Shem Tev says if we see something wrong by someone else, we, we should realize that it's by us. So in what way are we not fulfilling the Rebbe's Hayra by going and timing, hey, look, you shliach over there, you're not doing what the Rebbe says in Chayi Hey, look, you shliach over there. Hey, all of those shluchim over there. In what way are we maybe not fulfilling the Rebbe's Hayra by doing that? And a better question is, what is the best next step we could possibly do thinking ahead, thinking future, thinking optimistic and positive? What could we take do 
other than banging the truth over and over again, what can we pack it do to bring ourselves to that situation? Because it must be that it is possible. The Rebbe foresees and tells us it is possible. And it must be that we could do something to get us there. In my personal humble opinion, or not so humble opinion, I don't know if banging the truth on them works. It hasn't worked so far. And in my humble opinion, it's not going to work. Maybe, maybe we could keep going that way and keep arguing and debating and saying they should, they should, they should, and maybe it'll work tomorrow because it hasn't worked all these 30 years, but maybe it'll work tomorrow. But in my humble opinion, going and working in the purview that we can, the people that we can affect, the circles that we can, you know, this fabric that we're starting to do here right now, uh, we could brainstorm some more ideas. Uh, what if we do once a week uh, interviewing one shliach? bringing them to the table and testing the waters of opening up a frank conversation on the topic. And you know what? Maybe not going there so fast right away. Maybe going little by little, step by step. First starting off with general. How is Schlichel's going? How are things going? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And hearing all of his kfira and hearing all of his uh, the terrible things that he says about the Eivishter and about the Rebbe and about the Sikhis and about Moshiach. And, and tolerating it. You're oh, saying, exactly. saying we should do care. Yes, I think people get stuck off and on this Nakoda. So you're saying we shouldn't do mitzvahs anymore? It's like, hold it. We don't do mitzvahs because of shlichas. Mitzvahs do because the Ebershter told us to do mitzvahs. We will always be doing Torah mitzvahs. And if there will ever be somebody who's not, it will always be our job to help them out. There's a separate Nakoda of what's the unique mission to bring the Gula. The separate... Uh, but not it, to, it, So no, it, Shluch, what Shluchim are doing is Gavaldik. I'm a serious nefesh and get him nachasuach rab, and and it's gavaldik. There's another question: Are they bringing the gula? I don't know, but <laughs> it's two different things. Look, it, if we want to face them with the truth and say, "Hey, you're not able to face this truth," are we able to face our own truth? How difficult that's a, is that's it? That's an important nakuda, and I think certainly a practical thing that we can do. To enable uh, when we ourselves will be living more Mashiach and Gula conscious ourselves, that will certainly, the more it becomes internalized by us, will enable us to share the message with others in a way that they will be more open to accepting it. That's a very practical, real, and effective um, thing that we can all do. Um, I'm not going to yeah. say easily, but we can all do. Yeah, it's it. This is my my uh, uh, clickbait title article of Mashiachists are the real antis. And antis are the real Mishachists. Why are the Mishachists the real antis? Because we've, in a sense, given up on Mashiach being a cool, interesting, amazing thing that we want. It's just a fiery thing that we need to tell everyone and push on everyone. But wait a minute. Do you really like Mashiach? Do you like the idea? Do you know what it's all about? Do you really care for it? Are you going to really... Is, is, how is it going to affect Mamash in a way like, like tomorrow you're going to get a new phone that you're so excited about? Or we're going to make some parnasa for an avrech and, and, and make money or a so, business opportunity. Or uh, the exciting, juicy uh, political thing that's going on with the vaccines or with politics or the votes or Trump or I don't know what. Those are things that are like in our life and we enjoy and we cock in them. And why is Moshiach such a fun big deal? Well, so far, the thing that I'm gleaning is that it's a big deal because it's so fun to be right. That's what Mashiach is. Mashiach is, it's so fun to be right. And it's right because we know it's right, because it's the Rebbe, and the Rebbe is obviously the Rebbe, and it's the Rebbe Sichai. So, so, we're, so we're, it's a, Mashiach is a fun ride of being right. And I don't know if everyone likes that kind of Mashiach. Maybe people could be like, oh, you know what? I don't feel like that's a fun party for me. I don't know if that's something that I'm interested in. We could do a lot in getting into the real deal, what really Mashiach is about, and become a real Mashiachist which every anti we might find actually is also. And we are too, but we have to, yeah, we have to take a get on that track. Anyway, Chaim L'Chaim. Anyone else? Chaim L'Brachim. Chaim L'Brachim. Good. All yes. right. Shkoyach, everyone, for participating. And uh, we'll, we'll be back next time. And let's make this a bigger and bigger success, Mr. Shem. An hour, an hour and a half. It's not too bad. It's good. Shkoyach uh, Levi for... Uh, for you know, being the spearhead, uh, like I said, people take have hesitations coming on camera, and you were the Nachshim Ben Aminadov. So we really, really appreciate it. In many years, yeah, yeah. Yasu, I mean, just want to be very important. I think it says it's being recorded here. We should post a link to wherever this is being recorded. Yeah, for sure. If it's going to be an online file or if it gets downloaded, I'm not sure how it works, but yeah, whatever it is, if it's going to come up on my end or on your end, Levi, do it, share the link, share the file, whatever it is, and yeah. Uh, Okay, good. Shkoyach, shkoyach everyone, and we'll see you next time.